Let's talk some more about bonding. When two elements come together to bond, they can share electrons to fill their octets. And when we write down elements and their electrons as dots to form bonds, we're writing down what's known as Lewis electron dot structures. It was Gilbert Lewis who first proposed that eight electrons form a stable octet and the basis of much of bonding. So let's look at a few examples. Here's carbon bonded to four hydrogens. And why does that occur? Well, carbon has four valence electrons. Hydrogen has one. So if a carbon wants to fill its octet, it needs four more electrons. Each hydrogen has one, so if it bonds to four hydrogens, it can get to its octet. Carbon says, I'll share one with you, I'll share one with you, I'll share one with you, and one with you. And what I'll end up with is a carbon with an octet. And here, instead of the dots, I've drawn a single line to indicate the pair of electrons. So carbon has two, four, six, eight electrons around it. Each hydrogen has a pair of electrons. And a pair is sufficient for hydrogen because hydrogen only goes up to two. It fills up principal quantum level one and the maximum number of electrons there is two. Now there's some other examples. Here's oxygen with six valence electrons. So how can six valence electrons on one oxygen and six valence electrons on another oxygen come together to form a bonded oxygen molecule? Well, six on one and six on another is a total of 12. How do these oxygens share 12 electrons so that each octet is fulfilled? Well, here's the best way to do it. I write the oxygens with a double bond. Each of these lines represents two electrons that the oxygens are sharing. So if I count up the electrons, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, that's the 12 valence electrons that I can use for bonding. How did I share them? Well, this oxygen can count 2, 4, 6, 8 in its octet. And this oxygen can count 2, 4, 6, 8 in its octet. The shared electrons can be counted on both atoms. That's how nitrogen bonds as well. Nitrogen, the molecule, is a 10 electron system. Each nitrogen has five valence electrons. So five valence electrons from one nitrogen, five valence electrons from the other is a total of 10 that have to hold this molecule together in a bonded structure. We write the Lewis electron dot structure with a triple bond. Here it is, nitrogen, each sharing six electrons. The total count is 10, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. Those are all the valence electrons. For each nitrogen, it's 2, 4, 6, 8, a stable octet, 2, 4, 6, 8 on the other nitrogen. Now, the octet rule is followed a lot of the time, but there are exceptions. For instance, here's boron trifluoride, which is electron deficient. The boron trifluoride molecule is relatively stable, but boron only has six electrons around it. But because it's not a stable octet, it turns out boron trifluoride as a molecule is very reactive. Boron is looking to fill its octet. In fact, boron trifluoride will react with ammonia. And you can see ammonia, NH3, it has this extra pair of electrons, a lone pair on nitrogen, that's free to bond with boron in boron trifluoride. When you mix boron trifluoride and ammonia, immediately they form a compound between the nitrogen and boron, and a new molecule is formed. And we'll see that in the demo lab. Here's xenon with four fluorines bonded to it and two lone pairs. That's two, four, six, eight, 10, 12. 12 electrons around xenon. That's an expanded octet, more than eight. Elements that have larger nuclei have higher principal quantum levels they can access. So xenon can go to d orbitals in higher principal quantum levels. And it's not restricted to an octet. It can expand its octet using extra orbitals for bonding. The same thing with SF6. Again, sulfur here accommodating 12 electrons around it, two from each fluorine, to form this molecule, which is an extent expanded octet. So as you go below principal quantum level three, 
you get extra orbitals. You don't have to satisfy yourself with just your s and p orbitals and an octet. So we have the quantum mechanical explanation for the octet rule was, well, if I fill up l equals 0, 2 electrons, and l equal 1 with 6 electrons, that's 8, and that's stable. But expanded octets are also explained by quantum mechanics. It says, as you go to higher principal quantum levels, you have more orbitals that you can use for bonding. So you can expand your octet. So our understanding of quantum mechanics and this simple picture of bonding mesh together perfectly. We're going to continue to talk about bonding throughout this course and quantum mechanics as the fundamental nature that helps us understand all of chemistry.